प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो मारिए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह गणेशम महाराज निज हरि कृष्ण महाराज निज स्वामी नारायण भगवान निज सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our beloved Gansha Maharaj, the path maker to our, our liberation, our Puja Guruji. All of you santos and bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Today we're going to be conducting our Yua course, our 10th Yua course, our final course for this first half of the year. The examination for Yua exam English and Yua exam Gujarati will be taking place at the end of the month of June and then there will be a, a break for one month and then the new course for the second half of this year will continue onwards in August. So today we're going to be con conducting um, a vat from Sadhguru Gunati Tanan Swami and also uh, listening to the charitras of our Puja Guruji. So without further ado, I would like to get into uh, our uh, lecture for today of Sadguru Gunati Tan Swami Vato. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Vat Karije. These talks cannot be understood even in a hundred lives. Therefore, all should keep these talks in mind. Attach the Jeev to two righteous sadhus and three righteous devotees so that one does not fall from satsang. And if traces of lust and greed still remain, do not worry. Maharaj has said in the Vachnamrut, even if one has no desires of lust and greed, but if one's jiv is not attached to the bhakta, meaning the kantik sadhu of God, what is the use? In the absence of this attachment, one will become demonic. Therefore, the only important thing to understand and to do is to attach one's jiv to a righteous devotee of God. And other talks are spoken because we have to continue the righteous way of this satsang and follow niyams. That is why we have, that is what we have to do. Sadhguru Gunathyan Swami has spoken this vat approximately about 150 years ago. But after reading and anal analyzing Swami Nivato, I would like to say there's approximately 950 talks that are consisting of Swami Nivato, meaning 950 talks that have been put and compiled together by Sadhguru Balmukun Swami that Gunatitanan Swami has spoken in the Sabamandap in Junagadh. But out of these 950 talks, for myself, I would consider this vat to be top five. Why so? Because the very essential element of satsang is to stay inside of it. The first and foremost step, progress is something afterwards. But Swami here says that this is the most important thing to understand. What thing? To attach one's jiv, to attach one's soul to the ekantik sadhu. And Swami says that this vat, this talk cannot be even understood after 100 lives. That's how difficult it is. Well, we want to analyze each phrase so we can understand Swami's perspective by the grace of our Puja Guruji. <clears throat> These talks cannot be understood, meaning grasped, even in a hundred lives. 
Therefore, all should keep these talks in mind. Meaning, one should remember this. What? Attach the jiu, meaning close association, with two righteous sadhus. Sadhus meaning there is many types of sadhus. But the ekantik sadpurush, the sadpurush that is described in the Vachnamrut by Sriji Maharaj, the sadpurush that is the guiding light to taking one to Akshradam, the Satpurush who has the qualities according to the Satsangi Jivan, the Hari Gita, that kind of a Satpurush Bhagwan Swami Narayan is talking about here. And three righteous devotees, so one does not fall from Satsang. Mahar Swami says one should attach one's soul to two righteous sadhus and three righteous devotees. Now, you're probably wondering that sadhus, yes, we can understand. But why did Maharaj or why did Swami mention three righteous devotees as well? Well, devotees are also a part of this satsang. And in that time especially, there were many, many ekantik devotees, devotees that were like sadhus but lived in a householder life. So Swami knew this and saw this so he also recommended this kind of medicine as well but as of right now there are devotees in that caliber but they're very rare we have we, by the grace of our maharaj and our puja guruji we have such kind of devotees to the caliber in our satsang as well but the more important talk that we want to discuss and put weight on is to attach one's self to the ekantik sadhu. This vat, <clears throat> I even put it in top five, but for myself, I want to say it's number one. Beyond spiritual endeavors such as austerities, such as pen uh, penance and worship and bhajan and meditation and all these different kinds of endeavors, this vat surpasses everything because to attach one's self to the Ekantik Satpurush is number one, no easy task. Number two, if it is done, then that soul will go to Akshardham in this very life. But that attachment should be to a certain level that Swami is talking about. Not from our vision, not from our mind's vision, but from Sriji Maharaj's Vachnamrut's perspective and Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami and Sadguru Goparan Swami's perspective. Such kind of a level of attachment takes the soul to Akshardham right away. That's why Sriji Maharaj mentioned in the Vachnamrut Kadira 1st chapter 54, Bhagavad Dharma is upheld by maintaining profound love towards the Akantik Sant of God who possesses the attributes of Swadharma, Gnan, Vairagya and Bhakti coupled with knowledge of God's glory. Maintaining profound love towards such a Sant also opens up the gateway to liberation. If a person maintains profound love, love towards the Akantik Sant of God just as resolutely as he maintains profound love towards his own relatives, then the gateway to liberation opens up. <clears throat> Not only that, but in the Vachnamrut Sarangpur 10th chapter, attachment. What level is Sriji Maharaj looking at? What level is he speaking from? What level does he want, want us to get there? If a person is unable to attain such an understanding, which Maharaj mentioned previously in this Vachnamrut Sarangpur 10th chapter then he should maintain profound association with such a sant. If that sant were to daily beat him five times with a pair of shoes which is not going to happen, this is just an example, he should still tolerate such insults but just as an opium addict cannot abandon his addiction in no way should he abandon his association with the sant. Such a person should be known to be equal to that sant mentioned earlier, 
Moreover, whatever that sant attains, one who continues to profoundly associate with him, uh, associate with such a sant, also attains. Maharaj is not saying do 500 maras every day. Gunatitanan Swami is not saying do 1000 dunvats in one year. Goparan Swami is not saying do penance every day and eat only 100 or 200 grams every day. None of them, Maharaj, Sadguru Goparan Swami, Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami, they're not saying that. But definitely they're saying attach one soul to the Akantik Satpurush. No matter what, even if they beat us five times a day with a pair of shoes, Bhagwan had to give such an example. There is no way that this would happen, but Maharaj gave such an extreme example so that one can understand that that Maharaj is saying in such a factor that one should never leave the association of a sant, even if he does this. Because Maharaj knows that without the Ekantik Satpurush, there is no way that this Jew can attain Bhagwan's abode, Akshardham. Nonetheless, Maharaj mentioned, we can say a lottery ticket in today's modern terms. For example, suppose <clears throat> you have never scratched the lottery before, you have never gotten a lottery ticket, and somehow, some way, your friend convinces you that, hey, let's go and uh, let's scratch a lottery ticket. So you go to the $100 million lottery ticket jackpot 7-Eleven store where they, where they uh, you know, sell these lottery tickets and you go there and you ask for a ticket. And, you know, you're joking to your friend saying that this is not happening. This is a joke. Uh, I don't even know why you brought me here. This ticket is $5. I wasted my $5. And as you scratch, you see the numbers go and they exactly match the numbers that hit jackpot. And there you cannot believe it in front of your eyes that you have won the $100 million jackpot. In the same way, Maharaj here is mentioning that even if you stay in the company of such a sant and not leave his company, even if he does this, what? Beats one five times a day with a pair of shoes? No, not that. But may say harshly words to condemn our sabaos, destroy our sabaos. Even if we stay there, then whatever he attains, we also attain. Without any spiritual endeavors, without any kind of, you can say, without any kind of other, other, uh, other effort, we easily attain Bhagwan's abode and the level that that sant attains as well. Maharaj's daya is so extreme that it's kind of like, you can do nothing in this satsang and still go to Akshardham. Just have to stay and sit and live in the environment, in, in the vicinity of the Akantik Satpurush. That's all Bhagwan wants us to do. Because the Satpurush is so great, the Satpurush is, you can say, divine aura and energy and his, his, his samarthya is so great that no matter what, even if a soul comes in his vicinity, that soul will become one with God. That's how powerful that sant is. And we're very fortunate. All of us, Loyadam Padivar, kids, teenagers, yuvas, all of you who are listening, that we have attained the association of such an ekantik sadpurush in the form of our Puja Guruji, who is watching after us night and day, may we know it or not, who is inside of our soul with Bhagwan there, watching after us each and every step of the way, who is always protecting us from Maya, Kal, and Karma, who is there always looking after our Dharma, Bhakti, Gnan, and Vairagya. Such an Ekantik Satpurush. That's the level that Bhagwan Swaminarayan here is mentioning and wants us to understand. <clears throat> Nonetheless, <clears throat> Ma, Swami says two great sadhus and three great devotees. <clears throat> In the time of Sadguru Goparan Swami, there is a na there is a Hari Bhagat by the name of Sadasiv Sheth. 
He was from the village of Kambat, Gujarat. And there, Sadasu had affection for Gopan Swami. He also listened to Swami Nivato. And he had affection for Swami. But he was a very, very, very rich businessman, a merchant. And at that time, he had built a very, very expensive haveli. Or we can say, we can put it in terms of a wooden, you can say wooden uh, carved uh, mansion. <clears throat> Let's put it in that way. And Sadasu had built that haveli. And he said that, you know, I want, <clears throat> I want to invite Gopan Swami first, along with Santos, so that they can come and do Padramni Thad and purify this Haveli, and then I can go and live inside of it with my family. He was very, very excited. And he was so ecstatic that Satsang was also kind of diminishing. His life started to center around this Haveli, building it, not only that, but maintaining it, looking after it, thinking what he will do in the future plans, things like this. So he started to become engrossed in his Haveli. So much so that Sadhguru Goparan Swami, who was a very, very great sadhu, found out through his omniscient powers that this Sadasiyu's satsang is now only half because of this Haveli. And <clears throat> if I do not remove this, you can say, illness in, from inside of him, then instead of this life, he would, he's going to have to take five or ten lives and then he'll reach Bhagwan's abode Akshradam. So, Gopan Swami called Sadasiyu and said, come and live with me here and do my samagam. Yes, we'll come to your home for, or we'll come to your haveli to do padramni, but come and live with me here for one week and listen to my talks. And Sadasiyu agreed and he said, of course, why not Swami? I want to. And Sadasiyu came and started to listen to talks. Started to listen to talks regarding how this world is perishable. This world is is going to vanish one day. Everything inside of it is going to vanish one day. It's going to become dirt. It's not going to stay. These kinds of talks Swami did on and on for seven straight days. Now what had happened was in that time, there was a letter that had came and in that letter, <clears throat> it was for Sadasu, but first Gopan Swami got the letter. It said that Sadasu, your Haveli has been burned down. So Swami talked about these kinds of, you can say, perishable, this world is perishable, so that Sadasi would not have a heart attack if he found out right away. So Swami talked for seven days regarding this. And then what he did was Swami took the letter at first after reading it and put it underneath his asan where he sits. He did not show it to Sadasi. And he talked about how the world is perishable. After seven days, when he saw, Gopan Swami saw that Sadasi was completely okay now, he understood and grasped the concept, and he was not attached to the Haveli anymore. He took out the letter from underneath his asan, and he read that Sadasi, I'm sorry to inform you, but your, your uh, Haveli has been burned down. And Sadasi, instead of having a heart attack, he said, Swami, this world is perishable. Everything inside of it is perishable. No problem. This is the benefit of attaching one's soul to the Ekantik Satpurush. And that's why Gunati Tanan Swami says that attach the Jew with two righteous sadhus and three righteous devotees so one does not fall from satsang. If he had figured out at first that his Haveli had, had burned down, he would not only had a heart attack, but also would have taken a bow of satsang, of Bhagwan, saying that I've worshipped you for this much time and you burned down my Haveli. But instead, he was attached more to the sadhu and he listened to Gopan Swami's vato for seven straight days. And due to that, he got the proper understanding and his soul went to Akshardham that very life. 
Now, speaking of attaching oneself to the Sadpurush, I would like to preview a video of <clears throat> how a train, you'll be able to see a video here shortly, of a train engine and its boxes behind. No matter how many boxes there are behind the engine, the engine is powerful enough to pull the whole train. In the same way you can see here that this engine right here, it's only one engine and in the back there is many, many different, different, uh, you can say oil tanks. And due to just one engine, you can see right there, these dabbas or these oil tank tankers, these many are being pulled all at once at a high speed. In the same way, for this example, the Ekantik Satpurush is a train engine. And we are these oiled, small, you can say, tankers. No matter how much goods we have inside of us in the form of good qualities, no, mat no matter how much we are reputed and credited in society in this world, if we are not attached to the engine in the form of the Satpurush, then all that is not going to last and it will be wasted. That credit, those qualities, when the soul becomes attached to the Satpurush, become divine and they become used in Satsang for Maharaj Satpurush and this whole Parivar. But if those tankers did not have an engine, where can they go? They would be sitting in the station without any engine. In the same way, the Satpurush is the engine and we are all just mere boxes at, behind. The Satpurush is pulling us towards Akshardham. The Satpurush is taking us there at a very high speed. May we see it or not. Now, all we have to do is stay attached to the engine. All we have to do is follow what he says. All we have to do is serve him through our mind, body, and soul. And through that, one will attain Akshardham without any kind of problems. Lastly, in the Vachnamrut, Vartal 11th, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says, Therefore, intense love for the Satpurush is the only means to realizing one's Atma. It is the only means to realizing the glory of the Satpurush. And it is also the only means to having the direct realization of God. Everything comprises in attaching oneself to the Ekantik Satpurush. And Swami here says this very clearly. And he wants us to do the same. Nonetheless, <clears throat> if we think about it, this jiv, this soul, has no other sadhans or spiritual endeavors. We don't have dharma, we don't have bhakti, we don't have gnan, we don't have vairagya, we don't have maima, we don't have anything. But one thing definitely Bhagwan Swami Narayan has given us is affection. That affection each and every soul has. If we take that affection and attach or use that affection for the Ekantik Satpurush, then this soul can attain Akshar Dham in this very life. According to the Vachnam Vartal 5th chapter, Sadguru Nityan Swami asks, that if a lowest devotee wants to become the highest devotee in this very life, is it possible? Maharaj says it is possible, but just like how one does the Mansi Puja of, of God, if one also does the Mansi Puja of such a Bhakta of God, meaning the Akantik Satpurush with Maharaj, if one donates for God, 
if one also donates for such a bhakta, if one offers thar to Maharaj, one also offers thar to such a bhakta. In a similar stance, if one serves God in the same similar stance, if one such serves such a bhakta of God, meaning the Ekantik Satpurush, then one who is bound to go to Akshardham after a hundred lives goes to Akshardham this very life. This is Bhagwan Swaminarayan's statements in Vartal 5th chapter. So think about it. All of us Loyadam Parivar Bhakto. What are we doing now? And what are we here to do? Think about it. How much have I attached myself to Puja Guruji? His life, his qualities, his, his divinity. How much do I remember Puja Guruji in day? Do I message Puja Guruji daily? WhatsApp video, WhatsApp audio message? Do I remember Guruji through the mind? Do I do what Guruji says? All these questions should be asked and resolved one by one. Because without the Ekantik Satpurush, there is no Akshardham. It's just not possible. According to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Siddhans and principles, it's just not possible. But if we attach ourselves to Him, then this life we're going, going, and going for sure. Continuing on this vat. And if traces of lust and greed still remain, do not worry. Suppose we have vices, we have vices such as greed, lust, anger, ego, jealousy, so on and so forth. Do not worry. Maharaj has said in the Vachnamurth, even if one has no desires of lust and greed, but if one's jiv is not attached to the bhakta of God, what is the use? In the absence of such in the absence of this attachment, one will become demonic. That's how bad it will become. Therefore, the only important thing to understand is to do is to do is to attach one's jiv to a, a righteous devotee of God. And other talks are spoken because we have to continue the righteous way of this satsang and follow niyams. That is why we have to do. But the main thing is to attach oneself to the Ekantik Satpurush. Therefore, if you do not understand anything, if you cannot do 100 maras or 50 maras or even 11 maras in a day, do not worry. But our soul should be attached. And what are the characteristics? Number one, we would do exactly what the Akantik Satpurush commands us to do. If he wants us to stop eating onion and garlic, we would immediately follow his command. If he wants us to stop eating outside food, we would do it. If he wants us to, if he wants us to do Tilak Chanlo, we would do it right away. If he wants us to go to mandir and associate with sadhus, we would do that. If he wants us to listen to live katha on a daily basis, we would do this. Whatever he commands, may it be spiritually, or may it be socially, or may it be financially. It doesn't matter. You know, many of us have an understanding that <clears throat> Guruji, we only have to listen to on the spiritual stance. Whatever he says in spirituality, mandir-wise, yes, only that. But in reality, bhaktos, that's not where it ends. I want to give you an example of uh, this bhagat, one of our yuvas here at Loyadam Parivar. About five years ago, he graduated from university and um, had a... Uh, with very, very high uh, credentials and um, a very good degree in computer, computer uh, technology, I think. I'm not sure. But he got two job offers, one from the FBI, which was in the middle of nowhere, but pay grade started from $100,000 up with bonuses. And the second one was for United Airlines, and that pay grade was about 
approximately $70,000. But that very location had satsang, devotees were there. And this location for the FBI didn't have anything. So the Bhakta asked Puja Guruji, what should I do? You know, what would, what would be the best situation for me or what would be the best pick? Now Guruji analyzed everything and um, he asked every single minute detail. And after analyzing, Puja Guruji said, go and take the job of United. Guruji did not look at money. He did not look at how this Bhagta will be not making $30,000 more or will be having bonuses. But what did Guruji look at? Satsang. If his satsang remains, then he'll attain Akshardham in this life. But if he only receives money, then what? How long will that last? Well, what happened was that that Bhakta uh, selected United according to Puja Guruji's commands and he worked for a couple of years and about three or four years in, all of a sudden one, his contract um, was about to expire and he was a little tense and then what had happened was he received a new contract by Puja Guruji's grace but with that new contract, his pay grade increased to $100,000 without any kind of other you can say doing what did he do he just continued to work there but the Akantik Satpurush saw the future he saw that his satsang will remain and if his desire is for money then Satpurush also fulfills that as well Satpurush is like a chintamani meaning a wishing well he does not he, he grants everything and everything but he does not wish for the bad of anyone and that Hari Bhakta is now with a $100,000 pay grade by the grace of Puja Guruji. So think about it, not only spiritually, but on a financial basis and a social basis as well. Even colleges, if you have to select, go to colleges, first ask Puja Guruji. If you have to make a major decision of buying a store or buying a business or getting a job, first ask Guruji and then make your life's life decisions because whatever he plans he sees in the future and he selects whatever he selects he'll maintain not only your health in this life but your health in the life after as well that's why the ekantik satpurush is sung and that's why attaching oneself to the ekantik satpurush is so vital number two Remembering the Ekantik Satpurush. Remembering what he has done for us. Remembering how he has has blessed us, how he prays for us night and day for our 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 benefit. And by doing so, one will also remember God because it's a direct connection. So this satsang is very divine. The Akantik Satpurush that resides inside of the satsang is the very heart, we can say. And due to him, due to him, according to Sadguru Gopan Swami's Vato, Tirts or pilgrimages are created, deities or murtis are installed, sadhus are made, and scriptures are made. But if there was no Satpurush, then none of these four things would be able to, to even be created. That's how valuable this asset in the form of a Satpurush we have received is. So, just like how a kangaroo nurtures its babies in its pouch, the Satpurush is nurturing us. The Satpurush is nurturing us in his pouch and we can see here in this video of this kangaroo uh, here and it has babies inside two babies and it is jumping around and without any, without ease these two babies are grazing nonetheless there is no problems and they're actually very comfortable as you can see in the pouch of a kangaroo the kangaroo jumps extremely high and rapidly yet the babies are not hurt at all 
in the same way the Akantik Satpurush nurtures us in this world. May there be highs, may there be lows, may there be problems in your life. If we take his refuge, then automatically all of that will perish and everything will be okay. So this is Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swamini Vato. This is Vat, uh, Prakran number 1, Vat 237. And then finally in this Yuva course, Puja Guruji's Charitras here we want to convey. And see one of the days, uh, Puja Guruji has many, many, much, much traveling to do, but as of approximately 25 years ago, when all, Puja Guruji only had two saints with him, currently he has 50. But before, when he only had two, he used to, he didn't have the facility of a car, he did not have the facility of uh, any kind of uh, transportation. He used to hitchhike and he would sit in trucks of Sardarjis. He would sit in trucks and travel from city to city. And at times when the Sardaji would pick up other passengers, me, if there, if there were females in that group that wanted to come aboard the truck, then Puja Guruji would leave that truck behind and would again hitchhike, hitchhike and wait for another truck to come and pick him up, pick him up and go to the, the city that he wanted to. Such kind of you can say extreme harsh conditions Puja Guruji has tolerated. Nonetheless, one time when this exact prasang happened, Puja Guruji was sitting in a Sardarji's truck and uh, the Sardarji stopped and he wanted to pick up more passengers. And one of them must have had a female and Puja Guruji kindly said, I must go. You know, uh, you know, this is not according to our dharam niyam, we cannot do this. The Sardarji became so upset that he slapped Puja Guruji in the face. And Puja Guruji folded his hands and said, please forgive me. You know, uh, this is just our way. Uh, I am a Swaminarayan Sadhu and I cannot, uh, I cannot sit here with, uh, with any other opposite gender. Please respect, you know, my decision. The Sardarji said that you could have told us before. Why are you, why are you telling me right now? And Guruji tolerated such kind of pains and, and, and traveled and traveled and traveled and did satsang. And now we can see right now that such kind of mandirs are not even be created in the United States. But that's all due to Puja Guruji's tolerance. That's all due to Puja Guruji's efforts. That's all due to Puja Guruji's, you can say, manat that we are actually right now enjoying the fruits of pretty much sitting in air conditioning building whenever we need, sit, sitting in a heated, heated building, sitting with these lights and, and this beautiful murti of Piyura Ganshamara that Puja Guruji has actually sat for one month in and overlooked the whole works. And this beautiful murti, even in the Sampar that I currently, there is no other murti like this one. Puja Guruji has given us. Puja Guruji right now is tolerating 45 Celsius, which is approximately 112 degrees Fahrenheit heat in India, Loya, underneath, uh, you can say, uh, aluminum sheets uh, as roofing, um, such kind of buildings. And right now we are living here in the United States without any kind of problems or any other countries we can say that's his daya upon us now all we have to do is keep our soul attached to the ekantik satpurush join in him remember him appreciate him thank him talk to him call him be humble and do as he says if we do this then akshardham is not far away but Akshardham is here for us so remember these talks the this is uh the last yua course yua course 10 the exam again will be taken in the end of june uh, for both english and gujarati the next course will take place uh in the month of august starting in august there will be a one month break in july 
Our Batuts will also take place in July at the end, and then the course will start. So for those who do not receive the course or want to get the course, please uh, email us at lawyerthemng at gmail.com. Uh, as all of you know, due to the COVID uh, coronavirus, uh, right now all all the events and festivals that we had planned for this year are uh, shifted and delayed uh, until further notice, most likely next year. But um, all of you have the benefit of the doubt of using this technology via live and uh, joining and keeping uh, staying in touch with Loedam Parivar Satsang. So uh, you are all very fortunate. So continue to do so. There will be new, uh, uh, new kinds of activities in Kahoot and question and answer by Pujini Skam Swami and, and Kathas and everything will continue like this for this momentary time due to the virus spread. But as soon as Bhagwan eases everything down and as soon as everything kind of dims down, then we'll continue our operations here at Loyada Mandir uh, and everywhere else in the world. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.